Hey, what's going on? Zach Crawford here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between rich people versus poor people and why, you know, broke people stay broke and rich keep on getting more rich. So here's the thing. This is not a video to explain about, um, or I should say brag about all of my achievements, how much money I've made, my lifestyle. I honestly really hate doing that. This video is inspired by somebody in my Facebook group who asked me, Zach, how do you get rich online? And I knew the moment they asked me this question, they're not in the right mindset in order to get rich. They're not thinking about wealth in the right way. And so I wanted to create this video to explain a few things. And I can't take full credit for this video, to be honest. Um, I, I actually heard this from a guy named Myron Golden. Um, and I've also heard Tony Robbins and a few other people say it, but I've never heard anybody put um, things this way, you know, as good as it is. Like I, I've been teaching this stuff for years um, of like how you think about getting rich. Um, but I've never heard anybody explain it so well. So I can't take full credit for this. However, I am adding my own insights to the video as well. But I just thought I've never heard this phrase so well. Um, when I heard this, I just wanted to share it. So here's the thing you got to understand if you want to get rich and, and you, you want to go from being poor. And I want to really clarify, poor doesn't mean like you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're, you're inferior to people that are rich. And part of the reason I live in the Philippines half the year, it's not just because of my business. It's not just because I have, you know, employees over there. Um, I love the country. And part of the reason I love the country is, is, is how people think. So I want you to realize that a lot of people think that if you're rich, you're evil, you're bad, or, or for instance, you must've done something bad to do that, um, in order to get that money. And, and a lot of times poor people think this way, but to what I'm going back to is the reason I like being in the Philippines is because it keeps me humble. It makes me remind myself that no matter how high I climb, no matter how much money I make, I'm not any better than the person that truly is poor. And a lot of times I even hear Americans say that they're poor and they don't really know the true definition of poor until you go to a third world country where you see what real poor is. So here's the difference of why uh, most poor people stay poor or why they're broke, I should say, and why the rich keep getting richer is because of understanding these four levels of value. And that is what wealth is created upon. It's created on value to the marketplace. So there's four different levels of value. And a lot of times, most people are stuck in level one, maybe they'll go to level two, but they usually don't climb to a high level because they they, they stay stuck in th thinking about themselves, thinking about the lack of their resources or how much money they have in the bank account. They're focused on their problems and they're not focused on, on getting to the higher levels of value. And it wasn't for me until I went from, you know, $50,000 in debt. And I'll link up uh, one of these corners where the I button is on my documentary so you can see that I'm not just like talking out of my ass. I literally got hit by a drunk driver, was left with $50,000 in debt. Um, I was suicidal. It's, I wish I could make that story up, but unfortunately it's not. And I was coming from a very bad place in life. And it wasn't until I learned to really surround myself with rich people and learn from rich people and learn the differences of why I was in my spot. Now, I could easily blame that on the drunk driver, right? But it wasn't their fault. That was just something bad that happened to me. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, maybe. But I learned to take responsibility for my life and I learned to think like rich people because I studied them. I started learning from people that got to where I wanna be and I decided to learn this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you the four levels of value and the five resources that go with those. So what you wanna understand is the first three levels of value only have one resource attached to them and the top level of value has two. So I'm gonna break those down in this video. All right, so the lowest level of value is implementation. And so this is where most people are at. This is where really I was at um, when I started out my journey of entrepreneurship. And I was the worker bee, right? I was the person doing the work. I was the person grinding. And it's kind of funny. I'm going to explain to you the mindset of like how poor people think about the people that are at the top level of value. And I used to be one of those people. So I can confidently say that this is true. But implementation is doing the work. And a perfect example of this, okay, if you're working at McDonald's, you're probably going to make more like minimum wage, right? But at the highest level of this implementation phase of value, maybe you'll make around, let's say $75,000 a year. And I was a perfect example of that. I was towards the higher spectrum. I was making around roughly like $60,000 a year as a post office supervisor. So even though I was a supervisor and I was somewhat like managing the employees and keeping them on track and making sure they're doing their skill sets that they're supposed to do, which is throwing the packages, and, and this is the point I'm trying to make. When I said skill sets, their, their income ability is tapped. Their skill set is just manual labor. It's throwing things. They're using their muscles in order to actually do the work. Um, another example of this could be like if you're um, a construction worker or if you're a mechanic, you're, you're physically doing things in order to make the money. Now, that's not to say that you're some small-minded person or you're somebody that doesn't deserve to make more. It's just your value level that you can offer to people, to the marketplace. You, you can't work harder and, and, and make more money. You, you're gonna be tapped at a certain level. You can work harder if you want to, but you're not gonna be rewarded more for that. 
So for me, I was making roughly around sixty thousand dollars. And you know, because of that, I was frustrated. I thought I should be getting paid way more than what I should have got paid. But the problem was really me. I, I had not really increased increased my skills. I'd not increased my value level that I can offer my employer. And so therefore, I thought I should get something for nothing, right? I thought just because I'm a hard worker, I should be getting paid 10 times more than what I was worth. And so this is what you got to realize is that money is spiritual in nature. It's not materialistic. So if you're using your muscles like I was to throw packages, it's something that anybody can come in and replace you. You're 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 not somebody with a skill set that cannot be replaced. You're somebody that even though you may think that you have this extreme amount of value to add to your employer, they can replace you. Uh, most jobs are like this. Like the average person working a job, even if they make in the higher income bracket of $75,000, they tell themselves that they're irreplaceable and this company won't you know, be able to survive if, if they fire me, but that's not the truth. If you don't increase your skill levels, if you don't increase your value level, um, you can be replaced at any point. And this is a really dangerous level of value to be at if you wanna be making the type of money that you wanna make. All right, so the next value level is unification. And basically what this is, is management skills. You're using your resources and your management abilities in order to manage the people that do the work, right? So a perfect example of this is I used, I was a supervisor. And even though I thought that I was very valuable to my employer, right? Because I'm working hard and I'm, I'm this person that outworks everybody. That's what I told myself. But my manager, on the other hand, like he just, he sat back at a desk. He basically barked the orders, which is how I viewed it. And he got paid way more than me, right? And it was because of the fact that like he had higher level skills. He knew how to manage people. Um, I thought I knew how to manage people, but really I honestly didn't if I look back at it now. And with this value level, right? You're using your management skills and resources in order to make more money, but you, you're going to be capped at a certain point. Maybe you make around fifty thousand dollars if, say, um, you're at a lower end, like you know, food chain. I guess it's not lower end, but like Taco Bell um, or a White Castle or something like that. You're, you're basically a manager of um, the White Castle. However, you could make up to say a quarter million if maybe you're a manager of like um, a high level five hundred Fortune five hundred company or maybe a vice president. But the problem with this value level is just like the value level, um, the first stage, which is implementation. You're not actually doing the thing or doing the work, but you're gonna be capped at a certain income because you don't have more value in order to raise up in the company. You're gonna be pretty much tapped at that quarter a million, and that's probably if you're getting in a really good company. So this is something you gotta realize is that if you're at one of these two stages, yes, you can make great money, but a lot of times you're gonna spend 30, 40 years of your life in order to work up to that high level of value. This is the difference between poor people and rich people is rich people would never spend that much time in order to work their way up to make a quarter million dollars a year. So that is the second level, which is basically unification using your management skills. All right, so the next level of value is what poor people 100% avoid, and that is communication. And this is the highest, or I should say the second highest level of value. This is one that I think everybody could strive to get to, and they can learn it, but most people are going to avoid it. And the sad thing is communication is used in all aspects of our life. You know, you can make on the low end, let's say $100,000 a year um, as a good communicator. You can make on the high end $100 million. So what I want you to understand is communication is not just like you think something and you're sharing the idea with your friend or you're, you're telling somebody else. It's when you're speaking from your heart. You're speaking a message that makes people feel something. It evokes emotion. It makes them feel certainty. It makes them feel hope. It makes them feel great. It's something that they feel inside. It's not just like, hey, I wanna share this idea with you. Communicators are the highest paid people in the world for the most part. Now there's a higher level of value, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you can make a pretty darn good living as a good communicator. Um, when you think of, for instance, communication, some of the things may bring uh, bad thoughts to your head. For some people that may be like politics, right? Like say a president. Now, I'm not really big into politics, but somebody who rises to the president has learned to become a very effective communicator. They learn how to share their vision, share the message. Now, when I think of communicators, I think, um, for example, on the $100,000 level um, a year, that would be somebody that's like a salesman. Maybe they sell cars for an employer. Um, on the 100 million level, that could be like an A-list actor. It could be um, a singer. Um, it could be a businessman. So like maybe it's, it's Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Maybe it's Angelina Jolie. Um, as far as a businessman, the first person that comes to my mind is Steve Jobs. Now, whether you like um, the iPod or you like Apple or you're an Android user or a PC user, 
This is what I mean about don't just use your opinions. Look at successful people and learn from them. Learn how to see what they do and think about how can I use this in my own life. You know, for instance, when Steve Jobs first brought the iPod to the market, it changed everything. We were able to put music in our pocket instead of having to carry around a bunch of CDs and tapes. And then when he brought the iPhone, he painted this vision of how you have all your social media networks, your email, your computer literally in your pocket. And that's what I mean by communication. When you're able to make people feel something, you're able to help them see a new vision, a new future, some hope, it really can pay you a lot of money. Now, with anything, communication can be used for good or bad, but this is one of the highest levels of communication, and most poor people avoid it. They don't want to learn after they get out of school. Your average person, once they get out of high school or college, they never even pick up a book again. If you look up the stat, it's absolutely crazy. Rich people, and, and rich, I want to define something really quick of what I believe rich is. Rich doesn't necessarily mean the money in your bank account at the moment. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think that I'm rich. And it's not because I don't have a lot of money. It's because I still feel like I'm becoming that person who really deserves to be truly rich, you know, spiritually, um, in my relationships and business and all areas of my life. And that's the difference between poor people. Most poor people view things as it's not fair. You know, in fact, they look at a lot of um, rich people and they think that it's not fair. And if you think about this, you know, I, I know even in my own family, perfect example is they will make comments, for instance, some of them do labor work. And um, a lot of them are not too um, excited about the type of money I make because they think that I just basically sit in front of my computer, make a bunch of money, and it's not fair. But I've heard them make comments, for example, that no CEO should deserve to make the type of money they make sitting on their ass. And this is how most poor people view things. You know, rich people look at something and they're like, man, that person made a lot of money. I'm going to figure out how they did it. I'm going to learn from this person. I'm going to pay. I'm going to study the stuff they did for free. Whatever I have to do, I'm not going to make an excuse. I'm going to learn how to become that person. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I started at $50,000 in debt, got hit by a drunk driver, and I'm going to link that video somewhere in the, where the I button is. And you can watch my documentary if you want, just to see how I started. I started $50,000 in debt. I was in a very bad place in life. I did not think like a rich person, but I was determined to figure out how do I learn from these people? How do I learn how to become rich? How do I learn to turn my life around so I don't feel like I'm out of control and I'm not depressed and I'm not feeling like my life isn't going anywhere? I was thinking like a rich person before I was rich. And rich is a way of doing things. It's a way we think. It's the way we operate. Every single day when we get out of bed, we have a purpose. It's not just to basically exist in the world. Poor people are plugged into the matrix, right? They think that they're thinking something, but in reality, they're just regurgitating things they've already heard, things they believe that are the facts just because they heard it from one person. And a lot of times our parents or our friends are, are affecting how we think. So this is why it's important if you want to actually go from being broke to rich, you're going to have to actually start investing in yourself, investing in books, taking the time to read, putting down the television and pick up a book, you know, actually invest in a course of something. You want to learn how to do videography, but you don't have the money to go to college, go buy a $500 course online for somebody who's a videographer that teaches it online. Things are affordable these days, but people make excuses. So that is the difference between, you know, the rich and the poor is like, the rich are focusing on communication. They're learning how to get their ideas across to people. And the thing about communication is you use it in all areas of your life. You use it to communicate with your friends, you use it to communicate with your spouse, you use it to communicate with your kids if you have kids to do what you want them to do. For instance, do the right thing over going and smoking weed and getting you know, drunk. If you're not a good communicator, you're not gonna be able to communicate what you want people to think, what you want people to do, and a lot of times you're gonna be playing the losing game in life. So if you wanna to raise to higher income levels or you want people to follow you, you gotta become a good communicator. All right, so the final value level is imagination. And this is the level that 99% of people will never use. And it's, it's the level I talked about before where people don't think it's fair that the CEO sits behind a desk and does nothing and is able to make more money than them. And even more so, it's when they look at somebody that's a celebrity, like a movie star, and they're like, oh, they shouldn't make that kind of money. They're just acting. You know, these are the type of people that will never get to that level, and it's because of how they view things. So there's two resources at this level. Number one is your brain. It's your thinking power. The other level is actually using uh, money to make more money. So think of investing, right? So I want you to think of a couple of things and, and really figure out the difference between person A and person B. So let's imagine the stock market, right? Are there people that make lots of money in the stock market? Yes. Um, let's use person B. Is there somebody who goes and invests in stocks and then they lose a ton of money. Yes. 
What's the difference? They're using their brain. It's how they think. You know, oftentimes person B, um, I see all the time, like especially when they're trying to make money online, for example, and all the different business models, whether it's affiliate marketing, it's real estate, it's Shopify, it's Amazon FBA, it's running a digital agency. What they do is they say something doesn't work and it doesn't work because they didn't think like, how do you do this right? Okay, I, I made this mistake, but how do I fix it? What's the right answer to this problem? Who can I ask to help me figure it out? Who can I you know, buy mentorship from so they can coach me on actually how to do the right thing? They just look at things and say, at face value, it doesn't work. And it's the difference between what the rich people do and the poor people do. Poor people have their opinions. They formulate opinions before they have the real answers. They're not seeking out more information. Now, if you wanna get truly wealthy, truly rich, right? That's where you use both your imagination to create ideas. So you don't got to be the person physically doing the work. You're able to look in a marketplace and say, hey, this is a really good idea. I'm going to be the person to make that happen. They look at some kind of problem in the marketplace and say, that's my responsibility. I'm going to build a solution to that. Now, if you want to go to the ultra levels of wealth, that's when you take your money and invest in other things that are going to make you money. So what do poor people do? They invest in having the nicest car, um, investing in having the nicest house. You know, they think in order to, you have a house, that's a real asset, right? Um, but they're not making money with that house. Compared to the rich person, they're going to invest in real estate and rent that stuff out and make the money back so they can build wealth over time. Rich people and poor people think completely differently. And if you want to become rich, you have to learn to think different. You have to learn to invest in yourself like I talked about earlier. I've spent well over $150,000 in my personal education between getting coaches, going to seminars, I'm constantly buying new books. I literally have a new book on order every single week from Amazon. Like I'm constantly focused on getting better. I'm constantly focused on getting skills that will pay me more money. So what I wanna close this out with is if right now you're like, okay, this is great, Zach, I understand. You gotta add value to the marketplace, but I have no skills, I have no way to make money. So this is how you go from broke to rich, right? You find things that people are struggling with. You find problems and ask yourself, how can I be the solution to that problem or how can I connect people to the solution to that problem? So go out there and learn skills that will pay you more. Learn marketing. Like marketing sells. This is the number one thing that's gonna get you paid. In order to get um, to be a effective salesman, you're gonna have to learn communication. A perfect example is years ago, this whole camera thing, talking into a camera, it's quite weird. You're just looking down the barrel of a lens and there's nobody around you and it feels very weird. I remember the first, first time I did it, I could barely get any words out, but I looked around the marketplace in, in all different industries. I looked on TV, I looked on, on, on what other people are doing and most people are doing this. They're just scrolling down their newsfeed and, and paying attention to what's going on in the world, but they're not really paying attention. They're just consuming. I, I took a big view and looked from a different lens and said, okay, what are they doing, the successful people that I'm not? And I realized a lot of them were doing videos. They were very good at speaking their message. They were very good at persuading me to do the things that they wanted to do. And a lot of times these people are very good at sales. And so in order to sell something, you gotta be a good communicator. So start learning how to do sales, learn copywriting, learn how to talk on videos. Instead of just using social media to post stupid shit, use it to make money. Start learning to do the things that successful people do. If you wanna get into real estate, then find a real estate mentor. Find somebody who can teach you how to do it properly over just going and investing in your first real estate property and then losing your ass. This is the difference between rich people and poor people is we're constantly investing in ourselves. We're not investing in just getting the newest car or buying the biggest house so we can show off and make sure we have the bigger one in the, in the neighborhood. We're not worried about impressing people on social media that we don't even care about, nor do we know. Like you can't take likes, you can't take hearts to the bank, but you can take cash. And in order to get cash, you have to increase your value level. So that's the difference. If you're somebody who is stuck at the bottom levels, you need to start asking yourself, what is something I'm interested in? What is a skill set that I'm gonna focus on mastering and learning over the course of the next couple of years that will give me that million dollar income that I want? So that's all I got for you. I hope you got value from it. I hope this helps you understand why you may not be making the type of money you wanna make yet. And it's because you're not adding value to the marketplace. But that can be changed. You know, any skill is a habit. It's a habit that anybody can learn. You do the things daily that lead you to becoming that millionaire. So with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so because I drop videos every single day. And if you want to um, go deeper with this, if you want to learn how to put all this stuff together, I have a free training in the description. And with that being said, I will see you tomorrow.